Welcome back. My name is Tanner, and this is my road to recovery as I work towards returning back to the ops course race after having to get ankle surgery. Setbacks are inevitable in life. We've all had them, and nobody wants them. They often come up when we least expect it and leave us wondering how we'll ever recover and get back to where we want to be. Like some of you, I've come short on my goals in life. I've failed multiple CPA exams and I've been knocked down. I didn't try to forget the setback and I wasn't going to dwell on it. Instead, I used it as a stepping stone and that's where I find myself now. I was working so hard towards a goal, but I've been knocked down, not just physically with my broken ankle, but also mentally. So in this video right here, I'm going to be discussing the mental side of suffering a setback. I know I'm not alone for one who dedicates countless hours, days, weeks, months, or even years to honing a goal, only to have it all crumble away down like an avalanche. That's what having an injury is like to many athletes. When facing these type of setbacks, it's almost like facing a breakup. You're losing a relationship when you can't compete. When you experience this form of setback, it's normal for it to feel like a loss of identity. There are a few ways to stay focused on your recovery and get your body and mind back in the game. So in this video right here, I'm gonna give you four mental strategies that I'm applying right now, and then you can apply two if you're trying to overcome a setback. The first thing you can do is embrace the new normal. Often when we face an injury or a setback, we experience what is sometimes called the birthday syndrome. Think back to when you were a kid. It was two months before your birthday, and you couldn't think of anything else other than your birthday for those full two months. When you're injured or just experience a defeat, you're just focused on the day you'll be able to come back and win. But instead of imagining your comeback, put your energy into the process. Don't focus on two months from now, but focus on today. Setbacks are frustrating, but you have to let things be. It's sadly happy and you can't go back and change what happened. But what you can change is what you do today to allow yourself to get one step closer to getting back. One step closer to that goal. The second thing is one of my favorites and something that I'm always preaching. That is to focus on the things that you can control in life. When things don't go our way, it's easy to get engaged in the wrong thoughts. We drift into spaces and ideas that we have no power over. We start thinking about all the things that aren't going our way, worrying about the bad things that could happen next. Whenever I find myself moving from a positive outlook to a negative one, I try my best to bring my attention back to the most important aspects of all. When we focus on what we can control, our thoughts empower us and we trigger positive emotions. Do we give our power away to factors we cannot control, or do we retain it and direct energy onto the options where we actually can control? It's saying to yourself, this situation sucks, but let's see what I can make out of it. It's choosing not to fold the deck of cards just because you've been dealt a bad hand, but choosing to play to the best of your abilities in spite of it. It's choosing to ride the wave of change and not crash into it. It's being mindful and not wasteful. This state of mind can only be born from a mindset of always choosing to focus on what's within our control. Frequently engage in this kind of thinking, and you'll rewire your brain to naturally become more positive. Within our control are our own opinions, attitudes, aspirations, dreams, desires, and goals. We control how we spend our time, what books we consume, how productive we are, what we eat, the number of hours we choose to sleep, and who we choose to spend our time with. Trying to control or change what isn't within your control will only drain your energy and leave you in torment. What you can control is how you perceive a situation, how you react to it, and how you respond. The reality is this. Even though you might not like the situation you're in, you can choose to accept it. Once you learn to accept what it is, then focus on what you can control and you win. The third thing you can do is practice gratitude. Recovering from an injury or a setback doesn't necessarily mean getting back to your former self or setting your sights on a new goal right away. Those types of new goals aren't as effective. Instead, start with practicing gratitude each day. It's important to appreciate what your body can do and embrace the progress you've made. I love to run and perform compound workout movements when working out, but I can't do that right now. Instead, I'm focused on what I can do right now and being happy with it. Practicing gratitude doesn't have to be alone. I've also worked to carve out more time with friends and family including inviting them to my recovery sessions. The last mental strategy I'm gonna cover here is to set your sights, but not too high. This is where setting up goals can inspire you and keeping you disciplined as you embark on your next journey. Establishing small milestones and developing aims for the coming months will create aspirations for beyond. A great example of this is the SMART goal method. So creating SMART goals begins with making your goals specific. If coming back from an injury, get your doctor or your physical therapist to help you target specific areas with a clear understanding of how and why you will improve it. Then there is M for measurable, where you'll define clear and measurable outcomes, create tangible progress checks and evidence of completion to keep you on track. You also have to make sure your goals are achievable to avoid becoming demotivated. You should feel slightly challenged, but have the right knowledge, skills, and abilities to reach them. Next, make sure your recovery goals are results and not actions. Otherwise, how will you know if you've reached your desired result? Lastly, make sure your comeback goals are time-based. Establish a time frame with a progressive and a practical sense of urgency. Create goals that have tension between the current reality and the expected goal reality. When setting these time-based goals, you can have your short-term goals for the next few weeks, 
your medium term goals for maybe the next month, and lastly your long term goals from six to eight weeks from now. By setting smart goals to achieve your desired results, you can improve faster, rehabilitate quicker, and spend more time doing what you love. Just remember to roar yourself when you succeeded. I'll finally start building moving around again soon with a walking boot and taking on the next steps in my recovery process. So I'm excited for that. There you have it. Those are a few ways that I'm staying focused on my recovery in order to get my body and mind back in the game. It certainly is not easy going through this recovery process from an injury, but with the right mindset, it definitely makes the journey all the more enjoyable. But if you have any questions or experiences you wanna share, then please leave them in the comments down below. To end here, if you found this video helpful, please consider sharing and hitting that like button. Also, if you want to be sure you catch my next video on my road to recovery here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.